In this video, we're going to take a look at, uh, take a look at something in chemistry called stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is just a fancy word uh, that basically means uh, that we're taking uh, molar ratios in a balanced chemical equation uh, to find out uh, how many moles of product we're going to make, uh, how many grams of product we're going to make, uh, how many grams, how many moles of reactants we use. Basically, you can think of stoichiometry as a recipe for um, for a chemical or a chemical reaction. And what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, that analogy of a recipe as sort of a lead-in uh, for the mathematics involved in stoichiometry. Uh, so let's say uh, that we have uh, a cake recipe and we need one cup of flour, we need three eggs, and two tablespoons of butter. Now I know to make a good tasting cake you need other things and probably not these things in this quantity, but anyhow, uh, we, we are going to use these for the sake of argument uh, to hopefully make it clear uh, what we're going to do. So we say that in our cake that we're going to make, so one cup of flour, three eggs, and two tablespoons of butter, that is going to equal one cake uh, that we are going to make. Okay, so using this information, we can answer questions like this. So if we say, how many cakes can six eggs make? Well, there are two different ways that you can solve a particular problem like this. Uh, and I know at this point, most of you guys can probably look at this and do this in your head. But I want you to get used to uh, the process because that's going to be useful when we actually do uh, start looking at uh, chemical reactions um, uh, later on. So. Uh, how many cakes can six eggs make? The first thing I'm, or I'm going to solve this using a proportion first. So in using a proportion, I read the question, says how many cakes can six eggs make? So if I look at this example, how many uh, indicates that we don't know the answer. So if we don't know the answer, a lot of times we are going to uh, use a variable in order to uh, hold the place for the number that we're looking for. So I'm going to say uh, x cakes because we don't know how many cakes. That's what we're asking for. And I'm going to put that over the other part of the information that we know, six eggs. So I'm going to say six cakes uh, over six eggs. So as you'll see, as you're setting up your proportion, the left-hand side of the equal sign, the left-hand side of your proportion comes from the problem. So we had x cakes uh, over six eggs. The right-hand side uh, on this side, the right hand side of the proportion actually comes from our recipe, and our recipe is up here. Uh, later on, we're going to see that the recipe um, is going to be analogous to our balanced chemical equation, but let's just stick with the recipe analogy for, for right now. So here, I've put cakes on the top. Now, I could have put cakes on the bottom down here where the eggs are, and the eggs could have been on top. It doesn't really matter which is on top, cake or eggs. What does matter is whatever you choose to put on top must stay on top on the right-hand side. Whatever you choose to put on the bottom on the left-hand side must stay on the bottom on the right-hand side. So because I've got cakes on the top, let's just go ahead and uh, write in cakes on the top here. I'm going to put my line, and because I have eggs on the bottom, I'm going to put eggs on the bottom here. So now I've got my unit set up. So now we said the right-hand side of this comes from our recipe. If we look up at our recipe, what is the ratio of cakes and eggs? Well, if I take a look, I know that I needed three eggs to make one cake. So the ratio is three to one. So that's what I'm going to put in. For every one cake, I need three eggs. Okay. So now once you've set up your proportion, all you have to do now is cross multiply and divide. Cross multiply meaning that you have to take this six, multiply by one, which is going to give you 6. 6 times 1 is 6. And then 3 times x is 3x. So now once I get to this point, I want to get x by itself. So I'm going to divide this side by 3. I'm going to divide this side by 3. So now my x is going to be equal to 2. But now remember in chemistry and all of your science classes, you must put a unit on your numbers because a number means nothing without a unit. So if I look back up here, what unit was on my x? Well, cakes. So I'm going to say two cakes. That was my unit. So this is my answer. x is equal to two cakes. So 
let's do a different type of problem. Or not different, but just uh, another problem. So this one says, how many tablespoons of butter are needed for three cups of flour? So once again, let's take what we know uh, from the problem. The left-hand side of the proportion comes from the problem. The right-hand side of the problem comes from the, uh, the recipe. So it says, how many tablespoons? Well, we don't know. So I'm going to put X with a capital T for tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to put that over what else we know, three cups of flour. Well, we know that's three cups of flour. Now, once again, whatever I put on top must stay on top. So I put tablespoons of butter. So let me go ahead and put in uh, tablespoons of butter for my units on top. And my units on the bottom, I had cups of flour. So I'm going to keep cups of flour on the bottom. So the right-hand side of the proportion comes from the recipe. So let's scroll back up to see the recipe uh, and how butter relates to flour. So if we go back up to the recipe, we know that two tablespoons of butter mixed with one cup of flour makes a cake. So we know the ratio is two to one. So it's two tablespoons of butter to one cup of flour. Two tablespoons of butter to one cup of flour. So we'll put two tablespoons of butter to one cup of flour. So now once we set up the proportion, the only thing left to do now is to cross, multiply, and divide. So if I've got three times two, that's going to give me six. Now if I take x times one, that's going to give me x, or just it's a one x, but we're just going to write x. Now normally maybe you see the variable first, but six is equal to x. Uh, is the same thing as x is equal to 6. So once again, let's look at our units. What is the unit on our x? Tablespoons of butter. So that's what I'm going to put with this. So tablespoons of butter. And you can use this similar process for finding mole-to-mole -mole ratios when you do stoichiometry. And we will do... Uh, some chemistry stoichiometry uh, videos later on.